So the project in front of me here was some MIDI information. And to open up the MIDI editor, we just double click any of the MIDI items in our project. I'm gonna open up my drums by double clicking. And it looks like this. Notice it's all pushed to the corner. We could spread that out using our mouse wheel and scrolling up and down to get it sized correctly. But we'll get back to that in a bit. Also notice that these drum notes are all set up as rectangles. We'll change that as well. And over here is known as the MIDI piano roll. And because this is drums, I probably don't want it to be a piano for viewing over here. So we have those options up here in our toolbar. This is known as the MIDI toolbar, as it only shows up in the MIDI editor. Different from the regular toolbar up here. So the first option over here has four choices, the piano roll, the name notes, like this, showing the name of specific notes, which is better for drums, the event list, which shows our events one by one, and then finally, notation. But for drums, I prefer to use the second option. So I could choose this when I'm doing drums, and if I'm doing piano, strings, or a musical instrument, I could choose the piano roll. So I'm gonna choose this option. Then over here, we could choose how the notes look. By default, the rectangles, which makes sense for a musical instrument, but less sense for drums. So we have two other options to choose from, known as drum mode. We have triangles like this, which shows our notes, but doesn't show their duration. And we also have diamonds. So we could choose for drums between these two different options. And then use rectangles when we're doing something more musical. As we can see the length of the notes, as the length will matter, but not so much for drums. So I'm gonna switch this to triangles. Then we have the MIDI filter for filtering our notes, the track list to view our tracks, the quantized dialog, where the continuous controller selection follows note selection, showing our grid, turning snapping on and off, step sequencing, and moving this window to the dock. But we can customize this menu to add other options that are not in here by default. Now we could delete some of these if we don't use them, but personally, I tend to use all of these. So I'm gonna leave them alone and just add some more options. So we can right click and go down here and choose Customize Toolbar. And that opens up this dialog where we can see all those options we just went through right over here. And we could add as many as we want. So let's add one. And we could use any actions that show up in the MIDI editor section. As you can see, there's a ton of them. Let's search in the filter for zoom to content. And there's an action right here that's gonna zoom all MIDI notes to the size of our screen. I find this very useful when we first open up the MIDI editor to put all the notes in a better view. So let's select this and close it. And it adds that option right here, which shows up in the toolbar right here. If we wanna add a customized icon, just right click it. And I'm gonna choose this one right here. Of course, you can choose any one you want. Then close this, hit OK, and now it shows up right here. So Reaper opens up with everything pushed up like this. When we first double click it, we can just hit this button and it zooms out to the content we've recorded. So you can see it all perfectly filling up our screen. Instead of having to zoom up and down, in and out to make it perfect. At any point we want to see it all again, just hit this button. And we could perfectly see everything. Now for drums, we're seeing a bunch of notes I don't have drums assigned to, or I didn't perform them in this pass. If we want to hide those rows, we can go to the menu under view, show hide notes, and change this to hide unused note rows. And that cleans it up a bunch. We've just seen the notes we're using. In this case, my kick, snare, clap, and hi-hats. If you want to see it all again, go back to view, show hide note rows, and show all the note rows. Hit this again to see it all clearly. But if we want to do that quicker, we could do that with a toolbar button. So let's customize it again, right here. Let's go to add, and type into the filter, hide unused. We could choose this option right here, hide unused note rows. Let's select this, and let's also select to show all notes right here. 
So we can get it all back if we need to. Select and close this. Now we have these two options right here. And instead of using an icon, I'm just going to rename them Hide and Show. Hit OK. Now those buttons show up here as Hide and Show. So we could hide all the notes we're not using, make it clearer, show them all if we want to that easily. Instead of having to go to the menu to do this, we could zoom to our content, hide all the notes we're not using, or show them all if we need to. Now for drums, I like to add the name of our notes right on the notes. So if I'm zoomed in, so I can see it a bit clearer what note this is, instead of having to look over here. And we can do that also in the view menu. Go to piano roll notes and show note names on notes. And it puts the name right here so you can see it clearer what note is being played. My snare, hat, or kick. But we could add that option with a toolbar button. So let's customize it again. Go to add, type in the filter, show names. We could choose that option right here. And this is going to toggle so we could just use this option. Select and close, shows up right here. Let's give this a toolbar button. Right click. And I'm going to choose this one right here, close it, hit OK. Now it shows up over here. So now we could toggle whether the note names show up on the notes. We could hide the unused notes, show them if we want to. Now we could see the note names if we want to. If they're in the way, hit it again to hide them, hit it again to show the note names. So customizing this toolbar can be a lot more helpful than having to use all our menus. Now, if we right click up here, we could also switch what toolbar we're seeing. We're seeing the default, but there's also 16 others we could choose from, which we can customize for any use we want. If we choose it, it switches to that one, or we can go back to the default one and just open the other ones over here. Open the first one as a floating window, which we can resize and close it like that. Or we can position this toolbar as floating. Now our main toolbar is floating just like this. So we can zoom in, show or hide, see the names or not. And at any point, we want to reset this toolbar back to its default. Just right click, customize toolbar and reset it right here. Reset current to default, hit OK, and it goes back to that default. But I really think it's useful to customize our MIDI toolbars as a quicker way to adjust things in the MIDI editor. So that's pretty much it. That's customizing the MIDI toolbars in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.